In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at three completely different setups. So we've got my cheapest camping setup, my lightest camping setup, and then over here, we've got my most expensive. Won't be showing you absolutely everything that I take on each setup, because some things like first aid kits, and GPS navigation, and spare clothes, I tend to take the same no matter what kit I'm using. But I am going to be focusing on rucksack, sleeping pad, sleeping bag, and shelter. Start off with my cheaper setup. I was quite surprised to find that the Zephros Compact One was the cheapest tent that I own. I actually thought that the Nature Hike Cloud Peak Two would be the cheapest, but the Nature Hike has crept up in price to around 185 quid. Where the Zephros comes in at around 140, 145 at the moment. Quite a lot of tent there for the money. It does weigh in at 1.65 kilos though, which is quite a bit more than my lightest shelter, which is the Outdoor Research. Alpine Essential Bivy. So I used that for the first time last week up on Helvellyn. If you've not seen that video, I'll pop it up here. So this weighs in at only 550 grams with the pole. So very lightweight. However, there's no room inside for getting changed and things like that. So you really are relying on good weather for that one. And then moving on to my most expensive tent, the Hilleberg Solo Red Label. Can't believe that that is now 895 pounds to buy. Uh, I think I paid 570, something like that for mine. The demand for these has obviously shoved the price up quite a lot. You really do need to be using this regularly in some serious conditions to get your money's worth. So this is probably gonna be the first part of maybe four or five videos. So first one, I'm just gonna be comparing each of the bits of gear. Second one, I'm gonna be camping in either the cheapest, the lightest, or the most expensive. I'll let you decide by letting me know in the comments below. And then I'm gonna camp in, in turn, in each of them. And then we'll have some kind of summary, maybe a summary video where I choose my best all round setup. So it might be a mixture of these, it might be some other gear that I use. So make sure to subscribe and hit that bell down the bottom if you don't wanna miss out on those videos. So 145 quid, all the way up to just under 900 pounds. My maths isn't what it used to be, but the Hilleberg should be six times better <laughs> than, the, than the Zephros. And in my opinion, that just isn't the case. This is a really good tent for the money. There's acres of room inside, plenty of room for cooking in in this vestibule. It's not as strong as the Hilleberg and the materials aren't as good quality. This tent really is made to take a battering um, and it'll last you years and years in some of the harshest conditions if you look after it. But your average camper isn't pitching up on Mount Everest. So something like that will do for 99% of the, the camps that you want in the UK anyway. Only the harshest winds and heavy snow loading is going to mean that you need something a little more specialised like the Solo. The extra poles and the guy lines mean that this will stand up to most things that Mother Nature can throw at it. Obviously, I wouldn't camp in a hurricane. But what about bivvies? So this is my lightest shelter. I could have gone for my Terra Nova laser photon tent, which weighs about 800 grams. This is a little bit lighter at 550. Bivy camping is an acquired taste, not for everybody. However, I do love being able to just chuck this down, get my sleeping pad and mat inside. Got bug protection as well if I need it. And there is room for a few bits of essential gear inside. But it's so simple and it's the closest you're gonna to get to you know, just lying out in mother nature. But if it's raining, a better option is a tent or take a tarp with you so you can get in and out without getting your gear wet inside. In good weather though, that's my favorite type of camping. And I've not seen a hoop bivy that can come in at such a low weight. So here's another example of a hoop bivy. This is my Rab Uni Shelter. This weighs in at 1166 grams. So that's twice the weight. And there's a tiny bit more space in that though but nothing really noticeable. So I brought this bivy out because I'm filming something else from a Squarespace website, who have kindly sponsored today's video, by the way. So this week I've just added a new page where I'm gonna be doing competitions, raffles and giveaways, that kind of thing. So it's really easy to add a new page to your Squarespace website, adding photos, text, and I'm even gonna add a link to a video for this one. And then once the page has gone live, I can use the analytics to check how many people have viewed, um, whether people have clicked onto the links, things like that. 
You'll also see me upload this video to my homepage. So having a Squarespace website makes it really easy for me to both promote my business and my content. So if you're thinking about creating a website of your own, click the link in the description below or head over to squarespace.com slash Paul Messner. You'll get a totally free trial, so you've got nothing to lose. And then when you've got everything set up and ready to go, just use the promo code Paul Messner and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. Hey, right, let's look at rucksacks. So this one is my cheapest rucksack, a little spider on it. It's a Van Gogh Contour 50 plus 10. I've had this for ages. And I actually bought it second hand. It cost me about 25 pounds if I recall. It's not the lightest of backpacks that I've got, but it's reasonably comfortable. It's got some adjustment on it. Um, and I've used this many times. So the current version of this pack costs 60 pounds brand new. So you don't need to spend the earth to get out and start camping. But I also wanted to make the point that you don't have to buy everything brand new. So this was in, <laughs> mint condition when I bought it. Um, I have had to do a little repair myself somewhere. Yeah, some dodgy stitch in there where that tore off a little bit. But it still works as it's supposed to. Lots of little features like extra pockets and a sleeping bag compartment. It's a decent backpack, but it's just a little bulkier and not quite as lightweight as some of my other options. But to be honest with you, it will do just the same as this more expensive one, um, which was from Gregory. So this is about 200 pounds new. Some very similar features. In fact, it looks very similar with the adjustments and stuff. Um, there's a few other bits and bobs on it and the materials are lighter weight. It's got a better set of pockets and you know, little bungee compartments, things like that. And the, the head area is, is better on this pack. It's lighter weight and it does ride more comfortable. But even this isn't perfect, I've had to mod it myself to get the <laughs> you know, quick release hiking pole section on it. And then we go to lighter weight pack. So this is my Osprey Talon 33. Now this weighs virtually nothing. Um, however, it's got a lot less volume, so it's only got 33 litres in it. But when you're using lighter weight and smaller kit, you can get away with a lighter rucksack as well. So that is one of the benefits. And it's also so much more comfortable having lighter kit on your back than it is when you're lugging around 2.6 kilos of a Hilleberg Solo. This pack's got the features that I want, like the trekking pole quick release, loads of uh, stretchy pockets, but Osprey packs don't come with a waterproof cover as standard, most of them anyway. Even the cheapest one came with a rain cover. I really don't think it matters too much how much you spend on a pack, as long as it is really comfortable. Uh, make sure you get one that fits you properly. So they do come in different sizes, torso lengths, things like that. You are better off going to the shop and trying one on. But one thing to consider is how long you're going to be traveling for. So some of these bigger and bulkier packs, if you're carrying them for many, many miles, they do start to hurt a little bit. Whereas the lighter weight options, you know, they don't take as much out of your body. Right, so let's talk sleep systems. This is my cheapest sleep system. So we've got the Trekology UL80 sleeping pad and then this Euro Hike Down 500. So I'm cheating a little bit as I think this is actually my cheapest sleeping bag. It's a Van Gogh Nightline. Um, this bag is about 40 pounds, I think. Um, but it's quite bulky and it's only got a comfort rating of 4 to 20 degrees, so that's quite vague. It's a synthetic bag and it takes up way too much space in my rucksack. The Eurohike bag was only £50. Um, it's got duck feathers in it, <laughs> not down, but it is still <laughs> really warm for what it is. It's got a comfort rating of down to minus 5, I think, and it compresses a lot smaller than a synthetic bag. When you look at the materials on it, they're nowhere near as good as on the more expensive bags. So these are much better quality. And the Rab one is on a different level. So moving on to my lightest bag, this is the Rab Mythic Ultra. It weighs in at only 400 grams. And it's got what they call um, tilt technology, which is thermo-ionic lining technology. So it's got um, titanium infused into the fabric somehow which means it's much more thermally efficient and it reflects some of your heat back to you. This is also my most expensive bag as well. Retails at £550. So 
for my most expensive kit, I've actually chosen my next most expensive bit of sleeping kit, which is the UGQ Bandit quilt. This is a 12 degree quilt. Beautiful bit of kit. This is probably my favorite when it comes to, to sleeping equipment. Can't remember the exact price, but with import fees, it was close to the 400 mark. The pack sizes on all of these differ greatly. So the synthetic one that's in the bag is incredibly bulky when you compare it to what the Euro hike one is. The Mythic Ultra packs down to the size of a grapefruit and the UGQ one packs down to very little as well. However, it's by far the warmest. So it goes down to minus 12, as I said. So you expect it to be a little bulkier. But the sleeping bag is only half of the sleep system. In order to stay warm, you also need a decent sleeping pad. And this Trekology UL80 <laughs> doesn't fit that bill when it comes to staying warm, to be honest with you. It's very comfortable, but offers zero insulation. I was half tempted to bring my Thermarest closed cell foam mat instead of this, because it is actually warmer, but I do take one of these Highlander and little reflective mats. So they squash down pretty, pretty small, weigh nothing. Stick that underneath your Trekology and then you get um, a little bit of um, thermal efficiency, but it's also the comfort of this pad. This is one of the most comfortable pads I've slept on, but bear in mind that I've heard lots of reviews where they fail. So this one's not failed on me, but um, lots of people have had nights where they've deflated. And that doesn't make for a good camping trip. So my lightest sleeping pad is the Xped Sinmat Hyperlite in medium. I've had this pad ages and it's also really comfortable, but it's quite thin. So um, when I lay on my back, my arms do fall off the sides a little bit, but it only weighs in at 330 grams. It's also an insulated pad and I've used it around the zero degree mark. So it's, yeah, it's quite a good pad to be honest with you. But neither of them come anywhere close to my favorite sleeping pad, which is the most expensive by the way. It's the Thermarest Neowear X-Therm. This is in a large size, so plenty wide enough so my arms don't fall off. It's got an R value of 6.2, I think. By far the warmest pad I've ever slept on. It's also incredibly comfortable, uh, but it does come in at around 220 pounds, which is crazy money. But if you're gonna spend your money, in my opinion, on one bit of kit, it's your sleeping pad. Um, I'd rather have that sleeping pad than that tent. Um, so that's just me personally. Um, I can use that in more, more conditions and it'll get me out of a pinch. Whereas the Hilleberg is only really specialist for that one or two percent of the times when the wind gets outrageous. Hey, let's take a look at my cheapest cook kit. It's a little bit burnt in the bottom there. So this pot, I think it's a Euro hike. Yeah, it is. And it cost me about nine, 10 pound. Um, and this, is not actually my cheapest stove. Um, so this was about nine pound, but it's one of the cheapest stoves I've got. The cheapest one I have, it's got quite a large burner on it. So it's, it's too big for this particular uh, pot set. So a stove is one of those things where there's loads of options for under a tenner. Something like this little BCB cooker. Yeah, these are cheap as chips, um, but they're not the most efficient of things. So. I chose that particular gas stove. You can also make stoves yourself out of old pop cans and things like that. So virtually free this one. But this is the setup I'm going to be going for, for my cheapest option. Still under 20 pound for the, for the pot and the burner. You can actually fit it all inside as well. So I wonder if I can with that. like a glove. So moving on to the most expensive stove and the lightest stove that I've got. So this is the Evernew Appalachian system. Keep that in there as well for sometimes. So this weighs in at only 175 grams for the whole kit. You get a titanium burner. You also get um, a wood stove as well, so you can put twigs in there. Um, pot goes on top. 
This is ridiculously overpriced in my opinion, but uh, I didn't pay the going rate for it. So I've seen these now for sale for up to 200 pounds. Amazon have got it on for 168. And it might be lightweight, but you're just paying to save a couple of grams. Anyway, arguably my biggest waste of money when it comes to camping gear. So with it being the lightest and the most expensive, I chose a different stove for my most expensive kit. This is the Jetboil Minimo. Um, these are around 140 pounds. I've seen them for about 115 lately. It's one of my favorite stoves and I use this all the time. Very efficient, very reliable and gets the job done really quickly. That being said though, conditions like today, it will boil water exactly the same as that setup. At the end of the day, it's a little stove that transfers gas into a flame to your cooking surface. The jet boiler is definitely more efficient and it's got more features, but when you're just starting out, you only really need a cheap little cook set like the, the first one I showed you. So the plan now is to do a camp with each of these bits of kit. So most expensive, lightest and cheapest. I'll also be adding to that kit, you know, things like my first aid kit, but it'll be the same for all of them. Um, let me know in the comments below which one you'd like to see first. What's your thoughts on cheap versus lightweight versus expensive? You know, what has the biggest priority to you? And I look forward to showing you these bits of gear in the rest of the series.